It is our Thank God It's Friday edition of Live from Seattle. Today, of course, a tribute to 9-11. We've taken on a little bit of entertainment. We will be looking in the next segment, uh, next uh, hour rather, into the movies and getting you plugged in, shared some weird news. And right now, get ready for it. It's going to get loud. And you know, don't complain because I warned you. It's time for Sports! Sports! <laughs> Oh, oh, juice stack monster. Hut, hut. Go Sounders. Hut, Kraken, Kraken. Seahawks, Seahawks, return. Seahawks, return. Okay. All right. Oh, my goodness. You know, this that is That brings us happened. to the end of our first segment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. This is what happens when you shut people up too much you know you just <laughs> shut them in and you don't give them sports on a regular basis this is what happens yesterday was amazing i had to choose between watching soccer and watching football when was the last time you actually got to choose between which live sports you're going to watch we had hockey we had football we had soccer it was amazing and guys that's we have so to 2019 this. of you <laughs> <laughs> we got to get to this it's going to be great so i want to introduce you to our round table of folks here and we've got a full table today Rich Hallstrom, veteran sports reporter and official 12th man. We have pastor, uh, coach, um, chaplain, Garrick Payne, wears a lot of hats, right? Uh, we have with us a sports writer and photographer, Brent Baker. We have a sports authority, Joshua McMillan. We have with us, uh, he's a producer, he's a commentator, and he's an all-around cool guy. He is also our villain because he comes from, he, he lives outside of the state. And so his, his perspectives are sometimes a little off on sports. <laughs> he's the bad guy yeah yeah he's he's the bad guy but he is the most uh, righteous bad guy brother you'd ever want to know chris brown so guys welcome to the round table today lots to take on because oh, are you ready for some football oh yeah yeah right i mean i was born ready american football time. returns and last night, what a game between Kansas City and the Texans, Rich. Well, a great job by Pat Mahomes picking up where he left off. And the Chiefs defended their uh, Super Bowl championship, at least for the first night, making the Houston Texans look really, really bad. Josh, there's, yeah, no, other way, there's no other way to look at it. There's Maybe, no other way to but, look at it. But come on, you know they still uh, they they still scored. They they tried to give an effort out in the game was quarter. game was well out of hand. Michelle, thirty one well, straight course, thirty one straight points yeah. by it, the Kansas City. It wasn't, an, out, it Let's wasn't not, an outright spanking. I've let, seen worse, right? Go ahead, Chris. <laughs> hey, Chris, I agree with you. <laughs> there you go there you go come on our zoom call and say that to our faces let's do it <laughs> well by the way by the way, if you'd like to see the round table uh, sometime uh, around showtime here, we're going to make sure that uh, the, the Zoom call is uploaded. It won't be completely live, uh, but you'll see it. You'll be able to see us. Uh, so, uh, Josh, No scratches and all. <laughs> Josh, the Zoom, uh, 
The you Zoom call always... won't be live, but we are live. So uh, <laughs> that's just a good thing. Sound that he has to mention that. Uh, Joshua, <laughs> you, you, you've been a Mahomes fan from, from uh, his college years. Yeah, and he, he played really well. I mean, he, and remember, just as a note, that the Seahawks actually thought about drafting him if he slid to them in that draft. So th there's a, some appreciation there from the Seahawks side. But no, that was yeah. a, you know, I'll say it was a fun game to watch. I'm so excited to have football again. I wish we had a preseason because that, I mean, you could tell that there was no, there was no warm up. You know, these are the first live rounds that we're getting out there. And there was a lot of like little mistakes that you see that like, okay, that, you know, this is the, this shouldn't be happening in, in regular season. We should be in regular season form. I think it's just going to be like this for the first couple of weeks where we're just going to have a little bit of sloppy pay, play, some sloppy tackles, some, some missed catches, but I think it was still a really good game. It was fun to watch. I mean, Deshaun Watch and Patrick Mahomes, big fans of both of those guys, two of the the young, uh, in the mold of Russell Wilson, I'll say, young quarterbacks in the league that yeah, I think honestly, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. kind of they're kind of here because Russell Wilson paved this road, and uh, so it's really fun to watch them. It's fun to see the rest of the league kind of kind of adopting and buying into that. Also, man, the Texans need a GM. Like David Johnson looked really good, but getting rid of Deshaun Watson for pennies on the dollar, or sorry, not Deshaun Watson, but uh, DeAndre Hopkins, Hopkins for pennies on the dollar. Yeah. yeah, man. Like they, they need a GM. He's a good coach, but as a GM, man, I don't know. Right, Houston okay. will be the Houston will be the first one to fire their coach this season. Oh, oh wow. All right. Wow. Prediction right oh, wow. there, Brent. Hot take. Brent Baker, Brent Baker is with us. Uh, tell us your thoughts of the, of the game and as we inch our way into full-on football season. Well, I was totally agree with Josh, Joshua about what Houston is doing from a personnel standpoint, how you trade away a, a receiver like Hopkins. And, I mean, you could tell, by the way, um, Houston's offense struggled that they're really going to miss that guy I think though the thing that stood out for me was this uh, um, uh, the running back the rookie running back for, for Kansas City um, Edwards Hilaire yeah. good grief you you throw that kind of a runner in there with Mahomes and that offense it was dangerous enough as it was um, since they they cut um, was it Tyreek Hill a couple of years ago uh, they haven't really had a running attack like that to go with Mahomes. And you throw that kid in there, like, good grief. There's there's always going to be somebody open for, for Mahomes. Uh, plus, he obviously can run a bit on his own. And, and I think offensively, they're even going to be more dangerous this year. Defense, we'll see. They could be some some Madden scores they run up this year. We'll, it'll be fun to watch. <laughs> Not against us. They, no, they still have they still have Hill. It's it, who's the, the running back now plays for um, the Browns. Who is it, Rich? Oh, Hunt. 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 Yeah, there you go. Kareem, Kareem Hunt. Hunt. Yes. Kareem Hunt. That's who you're looking for. Yep. All right, uh, guys. Exciting season we have been long anticipating. We got cut off from sports right mid XFL season. XFL goes belly up. What's going to happen next? And luckily, we look. They have been purchased by a conglomerate and kids no arguing i'm taking those toys going into full-on nfl season let's get your thoughts and your predictions chris brown well let's see here i mean um wow it here, here's what i think first of all it is, i believe that last night we did not see josh did you know that mahomes was 10 out of 11 on passes that he released before three seconds. Like, they, Kansas City looked like they were fine-tuned. And I'm going to admit, I, I was bored, so I didn't watch the whole game. But uh, but <laughs> it looked like a, it was a normal, boring outcome. It looked like the normal who, – who, who could have predicted that? So, but everybody's saying Kansas City's going to win it all. No way. No way. Rich Hallstrom, give, no him, way. Rich Hallstrom, give him the stat about 93, Rich. 1993 was the last time a Super Bowl champion has repeated – so, Chris, thank you for that opening. I'm going to go right to it. It'll be Baltimore Ravens and the New Orleans Saints in the Super Bowl, and the Baltimore Ravens win. Well, that's I, why I love you, bro. Well, did, did you, Don't they have a little opening at prediction. safety that's a concern there? <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. No, no. hey, listen. It's, it's right. about chemistry. Uh, <laughs> all right, villain. Take a, take a back seat for a minute. Josh, Brent, Garrick, your predictions. <laughs> Uh, for Super Bowl? 
for the season and for Super Bowl. Let's for, do for it. The, Let's uh, just okay, well, I mean, if we're going to talk about the Mariners, uh, the, sorry, the Seahawks season. I'm excited <laughs> about the Mariners too, by the way, if you couldn't tell. Uh, the Seahawks season, I think they're going to do real well this year. I mean, if you look at it, the, the defensive line is still weak. We'll see what happens from that. We brought in some personnel. I think there's a lot on the defensive line riding on hopes and prayers. But you know what? Every single position group outside of the defensive line has improved this year. We have some real talent at every level of the defense, some real talent all over the offense. It's, it's gotten nowhere but better. I mean, other than quarterback, because, I mean, it's Russell Wilson. You can't really go up from Russell Wilson. There's no tier above Russell Wilson to jump to for quarterback. So I think the Seahawks are going to do real well this year. I think they might win the division. I think that the 49ers uh, might have a little bit of a hangover coming for him right now and i think that their their qb is is less than spectacular i think he's serviceable and you know a decent starter but i don't think he's he's star material uh so i think it, it's gonna really be us and the cardinals right now that are gonna be fighting for the top of that and i think that we have a decent chance of making it to the super bowl in terms of the super bowl you know the ravens have a really good chance i'll, I'll agree with you there but i i don't know i, I want to see what happens with lamar this year because you see it a lot of times in any sport a guy breaks out the first year and that that second year after the breakout is where they're really tested because now people are coming for them. People are planning for it. And so it's going to be really interesting, especially with Lamar's play style. That's my, been my biggest worry about him. He's electric. He's fun to watch. He's fast, but he's a smaller dude. And I don't know that he can take a hit like, like some of the other guys can. And I'm worried that someone's yeah. going to line him up and he's going to face some injuries. And, you know, RG three, you know, what, what did we see from RG3 when he was in this league? He was fast. He was dynamic. He was electric. Uh, but then injury bug caught him. And then he was he was slowed up. And he hasn't really been, you know, was never the same player after that. So that, that's my concern with Lamar. I don't want it to happen. I think he could be a good player for a long time. But that that's a big concern with someone with his play style. Because we've seen other people with his play style. And that's been the outcome. All right. Anyone else want to weigh in? We because we've got some bigger some bigger issues within uh, the NFL and all of sports that we're going to get to as well. So let's uh, let's wind this up uh, with any predictions that we want to just put out on the table. Seahawks all the way. Seahawks. I, I'm a home, I'm a hometown ahead, boy, Gary. and I love it when we've got the horses to back it up. So I, I'm Woo. putting all my I'm putting it all on the Seahawks. Like it, Brent. <laughs> Well, I think in the NFC, it's going to come down to, to the Seahawks and the Saints. And, you know, it may – we'll see if we have fans, you know, by the end of the year. That could, that could make a difference. Um, how, does, <laughs> yeah, how, does Drew Brees, how does Drew Brees hold up over the, over the season? It's kind of a big deal. Um, I, like, I like what the Seahawks have done. As Josh said, it's like other than defensive line, they are better across the board pretty much every, every position group which they'll need to be because last year they won a lot of close games against teams that had a lot of conveniently timed injuries. And so I don't think they can count on that, oh, those okay, situations okay. repeating themselves. So go yeah, ahead, Chris. Gotcha. You, seem to, I, you seem to be ready. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's for Michelle. Brent. That's so Michelle can navigate. Um, I'm raising my hand. If you can't see it, folks on the radio, I just, all right, listen, um, Chris Brown. Hey, miss, <laughs> miss, listen, Make sure, Garrick, make sure you're recording because I, I, I hope to play this back in, in a few months. Guys and lady, I have a feeling about those Seahawks and the Ravens. I've had this feeling. It's oh. not just fanboy. I've really got a feeling. I got a feeling Can that. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? That would be fun. Oh, my goodness. That's going to be fun. Now, I may be wearing my Sounders shirt, but I got my Seahawks shoes on. Those were made for you radio. Have to watch the, you have to go to my, you, yeah, you have to go to my Michelle Live to 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 get in on that joke. <laughs> Nonetheless, yeah, fans, can you imagine now? My prediction is it's going to stink if we get to the Super Bowl and we have no fans in the stands. Can oh, you? No kidding. I mean, can you even wrap your head around that? But there is something else that we're going to be taking on in our next segment, and that is uh, something that is headquartering, we'll say, in Miami. Chris. Yeah, the Miami Dolphins um, have gotten together as a team. They came out with a video and a poem. Um, delineating how they feel about the league, kind of the league-initiated 
uh, national anthem slash lift, lift every voice and sing, which is uh, given the nickname the Black National Anthem, uh, they are saying we're not coming out at all, and they're they're citing the reasons. and And basically, what they're saying is let's let's be about doing something. Let's not be about just a lot of cursory gestures. I think it's very interesting, especially because you have African American players who are agreeing we're not going to come out for lift every voice and sing. That is bold. That is a bold kind of statement there. It's not totally one-sided. I, I think, of course, it's leaning to, you know, one side, but it's not totally, though. Well, I think it's going to be interesting. Why, why would they not want to? What are some of the reasons that are cited? And what are some of the other statements that are coming out in other sport areas? We'll take this on for our face-off, and we're going to talk your Seattle Sounders coming up as Live from Seattle Sports Time Out continues. This is 8.20 a.m. The Word. And one. We are live from Seattle, 820 AM, The Word. I am Michelle Mendoza, your friend in the afternoon. And this is your Thank God It's Friday edition of Live from Seattle, where we sports it up. Yes, we are. And so gathered around the round table, we have with us the fellas. Let me introduce you. We have Joshua McMillan, our sports authority, Chris Brown, and uh, Rich Hallstrom, our authors of Thunder Sports Network, by the way. Chris Brown, he's a producer, he's a commentator, he's our villain, because he has, sometimes he has these dissenting views. Pray for him. Rich Hallstrom <laughs> is a veteran sports reporter. Uh, Garrett Payne, he's pastor, former uh chaplain for the Seattle Sounders. Woohoo! He is a coach. He's a pretty cool guy as well. We have Brent Baker, who is a sports writer and photographer. And then there's me. I'm Michelle Mendoza, and we are talking sports right now. Well, first thing I wanted to get to is your Seattle Sounders. What a match. Last night, now I wasn't looking forward to talking about the Sounders on Friday, because uh, Sunday... <laughs> We, we lost to Portland in our own home field, and I was sitting in the stand, not in the stands, in the press box, and it was one of the most miserable experiences of my life, not just because we lost, but because of the oddness of sitting in this sterile box, looking out at empty stands, watching a video of someone say, scarves up, Seattle, and then this canned, yay, happening, and you're like, there's nobody here here. It was very odd and very sad. And then we lost last night, however, a historic crazy 7-1. And can I just say it should be 7-0 win over San Jose. Congratulations, Sounders. They are on top here in the West, uh, which they would have been if they won against Portland. They're fighting for the supporter shield, but it's kind of difficult because they're they're uh, fighting against teams like Toronto. We'll talk about why that's kind of weird. But what I wanted to get to is that one score by San Jose, which was a penalty kick, Garrick, uh, that was that should not have been. It was not a foul. In fact, blatantly, you could see that it was not a foul. Why? Where, where is VR on this? Was someone not doing their job? Is there a rule that I don't know about? And, and you have to understand, if you are listening and you're not a big soccer fan, goal differential makes a difference. It's a big deal. Goal differential can put you in the playoffs or keep you out. Goal differential can put you, uh, it, how many goals you score against your opponent makes a big deal. So this is, this is huge, Garrick. I'd like your thoughts. Yeah, well, and for those who are new to soccer as well, the supporter shield means the team in the league with the very best record. And so um, so I, I'm not exactly sure what the rule is. Maybe some of the other guys might know, but when it's clear and obvious, the, the referee will make the call. And he thought it was clear and obvious. And so he just pointed to the spot. I mean, the score, it was already 7-0. And so I don't know if, from a human perspective, if that had a factor in whether or not, because that had been a very close game. I think there might, may have been more of a tendency for them to make sure that they took a look. 
And so I don't know if that had a, a factor in it, but it clearly was not a foul. I mean, he stepped on our defender's foot and then he went down, which was just such a, and th this is the thing. I mean, I'm, I'm not just a coach, but I mean, I've played soccer all my life. I've still pre COVID played three times a week. And, and this is what annoys me more than anything about our game. The beautiful game is, is when players take dives like this. And yes, I mean, I think you. retroactively, I think players actually can be fined for that. And so I'm hoping that that, that may be something that happens because that was just no, egregious. Fine, forget it. When a player takes a dive and they're writhing on the on the pitch, like, oh no, call my mom. I think that, that forget the fine. They need to be put in an NHL game and you know have to play yeah, hockey penalty with the box, big boys. Right? Yeah. <laughs> forget <laughs> play the a penalty man box. Get them on the ice and let right, them right. And show them what a real <laughs> foul looks like. Come on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've said this a lot of times. I think that the, that element of the game is one of the things that has kept it from being as popular in America as this game is everywhere else. I mean, not that it's yeah. not still popular here, but I think that the people see it as kind of a pansy sport because that's what the sport is famous for in a lot of ways here. People think about the flopping. And no one, no one likes that. They want to see a physical game. So I think it should, it should go as far as maybe even like uh, suspending them for a game if there's some egregious flopping that goes on. Because I, I think it hurts the sport, especially in America. It hurts the sport. No one wants to see that. Yeah. People don't want to see people, you know, like get their ear brushed and go down holding their head, you know, as if and they're they're dying. Well, I've seen. I, I was going to say I've seen that in the NBA more recently as well. Yeah, I mean that it's it's starting to happen all the time Kowitzki. in the NBA. <laughs> so I don't watch the NBA. <laughs> Well, you know, yeah, it just turns into a snowflake game. And where, where is it ever okay where we want to sit and watch someone have a debate with the, with the official? You know, anyway, you know, the official does their job. VR should be there to back them up or to make a call and say, hey, wait, 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 you didn't see the whole thing. We, I, you know, I don't want to hear someone going, but he hurt me and he's bad. And, you know, and, and. The games where you see the 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 uh, ref there, you know, patting someone on the back, and you know, it it just seems a little weird to me. So yeah, I'd like to get past that. That was the big disappointment. But the another disappointment, of course, was there was no fans to cheer them on in this historic seven-one win to, oh to be there, and it was just that part was really sad. And a lot of that sadness, gentlemen, comes because we're in these strange times, these strange, divided, and very political times. Just today, uh, Brian Schmetzer, I, I would think that the, this article came out, and I, was, I would think that he'd be talking about, yeah, look what we did, and we're on our way to the Supporters Shield, et cetera, et cetera, MLS Cup, you know, two years in a row, that'd be great. But he was talking about climate change. Last week, Pete Carroll, bless his heart, uh, comes from a great a great place but he's talking about how all white coaches have to recognize we're all racist basically is what he was saying um we we have a lot of this politics so i wanted to take on in our face off topics what is okay and what is not okay we had a coach for a high school team here in bremerton a couple of years back coach joe quietly going and kneeling on the 50 yard line to pray he lost his job uh, after 9 11 and as we celebrate 9 11 today we remember what we all went through and that was celebrated with a moment of silence during sporting events so what do you think is okay what isn't and taking into consideration Miami's just going we're not coming out for anything I'd like your thoughts we're going to face off Chris Brown. Yeah, Michelle, um, last night uh, at Notre Dame, there was a moment uh, where he came out. I don't know if you can hear me, but I think it's actually not. They didn't come out for the winner or the anthem. So they weren't out there either. They came out. I think the issue right here is uh, something that really makes me upset. Uh, I think it's a little bit of a 
Thank you. And that's important. And that's important that we recognize that, that Black Lives Matter is also a political movement that attacks families, that attacks uh, the idea of uh, freedom that we celebrate in America. Uh, there is the idea of um, uh, so the superiority of the Black race, which is n just as ugly and weird as some the celebration of white race when we're all one race, craziness. We have a similar thing with pride. That was kind of thrust on all fans that, you know, we have to wear the rainbow kits and the rainbow, we have to celebrate uh, pride. There is nothing wrong with saying everybody is welcome on this team and in this stadium. We will not stand for ugliness or hate, but it's another thing when you have to get behind the LGBTQ agenda. Uh, that is not the inclusive message that they want to portray. So here we are in, in such a strange time. I'd like uh, more of your thoughts, Brent. Well, I think well, we've kind of covered some of this ground before, but I think for me, um, you know, I appreciate um, these men and women and, and all the, across the different leagues, um, you know, using their platform and their visibility to express themselves. And there's, you know, I've learned a lot from some people with some very different backgrounds than mine, you know, some of their experiences, which, um, you know, in some cases are, are just horrible that they've gone through. You know, I, what I don't like is the demonstration once they cross the line into field of play, um, you know, and that goes, for me, it goes across the board. I, I don't want um, people making political statements, you know, in between plays or, you know, on the field right prior to the include, game. But does that include someone, you know, giving the, th uh, the sign of a cross or pointing up to God or, you know? Where do you well, draw that line? I think there, I think there's a difference between during doing that between you know, in well, on the I field do, of play, you do, game, and there's, but... yeah, I, th I, I think if there, if there's people that object to that, I can respect that. Um, I'm always more, much more comfortable when somebody uses their platform and says, you know, you know who I am because I play for the Seahawks, so I, here's what I feel about this, and yeah, people are going to yeah. listen to Russell Wilson, people are going to listen to Pete Carroll, but. If they're not, if they're the out field. there on there, yeah. So that's just kind of where I've been with all of this. So, well, Russell yeah, Wilson I, I, is known to have gone to the sidelines after a game and kneeled and prayed with some of the guys from the other team. You know, that wasn't a show during the national anthem, it wasn't a show during the, the game, it was something that they did because that's something they believed in, and it spoke volumes, Josh. Yeah, and I think there's <laughs> There's something to be said for that. I mean, I think one thing I appreciate about Russell Wilson is that he, he does use his voice. And um, Doug Baldwin was kind of similar, where he used his voice a lot outside of the game and still does a lot to affect things and affect change outside of the game. Uh, but you can also do things, you know, just be the best. Ex it's uh, being a witness, right? I mean, like as far as Christians go, Russell Wilson does a great job of that, I think, of being a witness to people, like living a life that he can be proud of and, you know, loving people. Like, going, like you said, going over to the other sideline, kneeling down and praying with them after the game. You know, he's not, he's not doing that for a camera. He's not doing that to show anyone up. He's just doing that with, with people that he loves, people he cares about, or people that maybe he hasn't met before, but, you know, he heard they're a Christian or maybe just – something happened during the game, but he, he, he does a lot of that. Those little things that you hear, you see little bits of on camera or you hear little bits about that like come out in interviews and things like that. Um, I think that's the way you do things, you know, like, like you said, use your platform, it's getting, use it it's getting a little where it'll be heard, but 
you don't don't shove it down people's throats either. And, and it's kind of feeling that way. I just want to get back to the game, Rich. Well, I think we have examples here of the all or nothing mentality. And I'll give you an exa I'll give you an example. You can believe in equality, but you don't necessarily have to believe in the Black Lives Matter organization. And that's where people are confusing the issue. The Black Lives Matter organization is different than being for black, the equality of all people and specifically black people in that example. And that is where uh, we are going and getting off the rail, getting off the rails here. So what we have to do is what Josh alluded to your own personal testimony to individuals one on one is what is going to be changing Always pe more people's powerful, hearts. But when did it ever come to a place where it was okay, though, to when someone says, "Look, um, my fam, my my family is a military family. I've had people who have died defending the rights of our nation, and it it, it breaks me when I see people turning their backs." Uh, kneeling during the national anthem, you know, get your point out, but kneeling during the national anthem, that's the source of a lot of booze. And, and I don't think people are, are wrapping their head around it. As you said, Rich, it's all or nothing. You got to think like me. And that's a lot of the mentality, Garrick, that you see out of the Antifa movement, out of the Iron Front folks that are very tied in to the Seattle Sounders and the supporters section. Well, I think, you know, to kind of coalesce what everybody has shared, I would liken this to uh, the First Amendment, okay, which in that there's the Establishment Clause, as, as it's known, which we talk about as the separation of church and state. Excellent okay? point. And I think from that perspective, the government shall not establish religion. And I'm actually, as a pastor, I believe in that. Because the government, that's not the government's role. In the same way, sports franchises should not be making political statements. And so be there to play sports and do what we do in sports, but not for politics. If Brian Schmetzer wants to make a, a, a comment, that's fine. I, it doesn't really bother me uh, particularly. But just when you're on, on the, the field, field <laughs> as Brent said, yeah, just do what yeah. you do on the field. And we've talked about this many times, but sports has so much potential to unify. But unfortunately, because of the politic politicization of it, it has become divisive. And so let's just get back to sports, the way that sports can be sports. <laughs> I, and I will concur with you because sports does an awesome thing of bringing everybody together. If you, if you play, I don't care what color you are. I don't care what religion you are. I don't care what you ate for breakfast as long as I don't have to smell it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And even then, if you play well, bring it on. That's what sports does. Chris, bring it home. So as Christians, uh, the thing I've been trying to focus on myself because, you know, I have a very, you know, strong viewpoint on it. And, and I'm, of course, you know, you guys know I'm very conservative. But, at, but what I've been kind of trying to grow in is, as a Christian, what's going to attract people is if they see the love of Jesus. Not my rightness, but if they see the love of Jesus. And I believe the best way I can show that in these circumstances is to mourn with those who mourn. I mean, just... Uh, you know, when, when, when guys are doing it, eventually we're going to get to the game. <laughs> eventually we're going to get to the game. So I'm just trying to, that's what I'm trying to do is mourn with those who mourn. And remember guys, these, these fellas come from, you saw Deshaun Watson just totally break down when he became the second highest paid player in the league in his press conference. He's crying because he's talking about where he came from and nobody ever knew that he'd be able to set his parents up for life financially. These guys have that pressure behind them. So for them to get on that platform, they have they feel like we got to say something. We got to do something or else we're just benefiting from all this, you know, this richness and this athleticism and we don't have to in any way make a commentary. Look, Thank I don't I don't that. agree That's with important. it. But yeah, I don't, I don't, don't agree with to, all though, of it. But, but you're hearing where they're coming from, Chris. I'm hearing what you're saying. This is important for us to lament, to hear to empathize and to love, man, 
and learn because uh, as Pete Carroll was saying, hey, you know, they know what's going on in their world. We may not have a, a clue. Listen, this is our time to listen. But it's also our time to say, hey, listening goes both ways and respect goes both ways. And if we are to move forward, you have to move forward with, with love and with peace, with uh, the kind of spirit that you saw in the civil rights movement in the 1950s and 60s with, uh, might I say, bringing this home to the recognition that this is 9-11 today with that kind of unity that we had then and not division. Lines were, were blurred then of what you looked like, who you were. We just came together as a people. That is how we move forward. And now it is time for us uh, to give our final shot. Time for our final shot. We go around the round table and give just a quick shout out. Uh, Josh also gives us a little bit of the Mariners update. And Brent, I'm going to ask you today if you could give us an update as well on uh, the region you live has been hard hit by wildfires. How are you all doing and how can we be praying for you? Well, uh, personally, I'm doing fine. Um, but uh, the fire that really took off on Monday um, when the fire started, the winds were blowing about 50 miles an hour. And so, um, well, there's two fire names, but they're actually one big fire that burned over 300,000 acres in a matter of 24 hours. A um, lot of homes lost. They don't even know how many yet. A lot of chaos. Um, there was one family that we know of um, from the Seattle area that got caught in the fire and lost their baby. Um, and so... Uh, so it's been hard. Um, and we still have kind of collective trauma from big fires that here, hit here about five years ago. Um, so there's still a lot going on. The fires, I mean, th the situation is a lot more stable than it was a couple days ago. Um, but there's still a lot of people out of their homes. A um, lot of, uh, you know, people in shelters, which is even more complicated with COVID going on. Um, so yeah, I'd be praying for the, the front lines people, the firefighters. It was, I can't believe that no one, uh, things weren't worse than they were as far as human loss on Monday. Cause it was, when you have a fire that can move, you know, 60 miles in a day, I mean, you don't outrun that. Um, so the towns of Bridgeport and Omak, um, they definitely had some loss of, of structures there and a little farming town called Mansfield where they were, all told to get out now. Uh, oh, wait, the roads are closed because the smoke and dust is so thick. So you all gather at the school and pray. I mean, that's, you know, they ended up, the town ended up being fine. But for a few hundred people, that had to be a really scary and traumatic experience. So, um, so this, yes, yeah, I mean, really, this is a, something that's going on all up and down the West Coast. Um, I read that there's like a half million people that have been displaced in Oregon. Uh, you know, most of them will be able to go back to homes, but a lot of, a lot of people are losing homes and livelihoods. Um, so on top of what's gone on with the virus, it's just a, a tough thing for a lot of people. So pray that churches and other organizations really, um, uh, you know, come, come out of the woodwork to, to aid families and, and people that have lost everything. Um, a lot of these areas like the Colville Indian Reservation, you know, there's not a lot of money in some of these areas. And so there's people that have lost homes that aren't insured, um, people that already are unemployed. So, um, so pray and watch, you know, watch for official places that you can make donations to. Um, I don't have any off the top of my head I can re recommend right now, but well, there's, I, there, I will when you read you the news stories, that. they usually... I'll let you all know that we're working with Save the Children right now. Uh, they're, one of the things that they are doing is taking care of kids who have no food, who have been displaced out of their schools where the feeding programs are. So mm -hmm. uh, you, can, you can give at the word seattle.com, Save the Children. Uh, they always have boots on the ground no matter what uh, problems going on around the world in uh, over 100 Excellent. countries. So. Uh, they'll be here too. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Brent. Um, 
Joshua, you want to give us a quick Mariners update and your final shot? Oh, yeah. All right, guys. Don't look now, but the Mariners are in the hunt for a playoff spot. Uh, I know this is, again, like a big, big rebuild year. And uh, they've been a fun team to watch. I got to say, they've been so much fun. And honestly, whether or not they make the playoffs mission accomplished this year, because they have some good talent Mm -hmm. that is, is showing up and looks to be big parts of our future it's in we're right now our last 10 games we're six and four the Astros and the Yankees who are trailing are they're currently two and eight and three and seven in their last 10 games respectively so we're trending a lot better than they are right now and we're only a couple of games back we might actually break this playoff drought in the weird year of only 60 games in the middle of a rebuild and and we sold off at the deadline you know we sold off Taiwan Walker and Austin Nola um it's a couple other guys so it's it's really exciting to see i hope we make the playoffs but if we don't i i won't be too upset either we'll get a better draft pick out of it uh it, I, I gotta say for my uh for my, my final shot hi <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, cameo cameo your final, final shot. shot right there right there <laughs> uh, my final shot i'm gonna send out to jerry depoto uh, who just has a great eye for what other people consider scrap heap guys you know these guys that the league's kind of discarded you know long-term minor leaguers haven't really done anything you look at uh, Tim Lopes, who's been doing really well this season. David Moore, who's been spectacular as a utility man. Austin Nola, who has accrued enough value to be able to trade and get top prospects back from. Guy who was in the minor leagues eight years. It's just really cool to see and seeing these guys get the opportunity to come up. Chris Haggerty, another one. Like, and they come up and they play well. At, you know, after getting a little bit of coaching and getting a little bit of support and belief underneath them, it, it's. It's been awesome. I, I love what Jerry does with this team and the guys that he's able to find in these trades. You want to know what's awesome is Garrick Pang's uh, changing background. Chris Brown, he's up on it too. This is fun. If you go to my Michelle I'm just at the Live beach, so. today <laughs> at Dell Beach, you'll be able to watch our uh, Zoom conversation and, and get all of the things that uh, we don't even all get on the air. So very cool. Uh, Garrick Pang, we usually call on you last and everyone steals your thunder. So it's time for us to get panged first. Pang us. Thank you. Hey, my, my shout out, I actually should have given it to him last week because last week he scored two beautiful goals. And then again, last night, he opened our scoring account. Yeah. Jordan oh. Morris. Oh my goodness. That That's was one of the, the best of the week. individual J-Mo. efforts. I know he just really took it to him and he was on He's fire last night. But, but I have to also, since today is September 11th, and you know the saying for September 11th is never forget. Well, um, on my background here is my bride. Uh, it's her. It's her birthday today, and um, birthday. she's quite a bit younger than me, of course. But uh, <laughs> but uh, but it's it's her birthday today. So Anna, I love you. Happy birthday, babe. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Anna. <laughs> Happy birthday. Uh, <laughs> Brent and uh, Garrick and Josh, we've heard from you. Let's hear from Rich Hallstrom. Well, Michelle, this is a this is a momentous day in the in the country's history. We all know about 9/11. Uh, let's say one more time, very thankful to the first responders. Those are the real heroes of this day, and without them, we would not have the country that we do. And remember, it ties in with the gospel. Jesus said he be, he came to be a servant, not to be served. The ultimate sacrifice was made on this day to serve others. Mm-hmm. Remember that. Chris Brown. All right. A couple of things. Uh, a couple of things. First of all, um, I have a picture on the Zoom uh, of, of the proof that I'm going to be at every Ravens home game uh, this season. That is the nice. official cutout that we're going to have. And also we're going to be at every uh, University of North Carolina home game every this season too. Hey, I can't wait to show you what it looks like after the season because we're going to get it back. We're going to get the cutout back and they're just going to leave it out there. So it's gonna be funny to see is how the, that works. Is the cutout going to join us on the show? <laughs> oh yeah. Why not? Why not? Why Maybe not? he'll have more bring life it, than me. Yeah. Josh, now listen, are you there? Um, oh, go oh, ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Chris. Go ahead. 
listen, and uh, now on a more serious note, and thank you all for talking to, you know, about September 11th, this, this, my shout out this week goes to uh, a, a brother, a gentleman who participated in helping. He's a, he's a retired New York uh, NYPD police officer who rushed one of the, the towers when they were falling. So he was in there and he, he's a big fan. He, 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 he won't be too out about it, but he's a Jets fan up there. Uh, but his name is, <laughs> his name is John Zerbo. And, uh, it, you know, I've, I've just, I just like to, I've known him for a couple of years. I just like to every now and then give him shout outs randomly. And, you know, what I, what I've been doing is putting up a hashtag, hashtag John Z is a hero. I've just been randomly putting that out there. Uh, Cause that, that's John Z and he, um, gosh, we love our families love each other. What a, what a great guy. Thank you, John Zerbo, uh, for serving uh, your fellow man. Well, my final shot uh, is going to go to Joshua, who, um, Josh, you have some big news, some really big news. Yeah, we, uh, we have a new future Seahawks player on the way and a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Yeah, yes. he, he and his he and his bride are going to have a baby. So I want to give a final shot, uh, my final shout out to Josh and his bride Alyssa. Um, so yeah, you just uh, I'll I'll be buying the. In fact, I already have purchased, by the way, some Seahawks gear. So um, <laughs> it, it will be Perfect. on the way. A, a you baby got blanket. It, you got it. Pretty pajamas. There you go. Yeah. Football. It's it's important here and some yeah. sounders. Football uh, sounders Seahawks kit. binky. <laughs> Future Seahawks and place kit. Knitted hat. I just want to say on this 9-11, um, we should not forget 9-11, but we should not forget the American spirit that brought us together and the need that we had at that time that we sought to be filled with are looking up towards the heavens, towards a God who loves us in the midst of whatever might come. He is glorious. He is good. He is worthy of praise. He upholds us in our darkest hour, and he is awesome. And so are you guys. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we are going to get you plugged into the movie. Stay with us. We're live from Seattle, 8, 20 a.m. Don't word. Happy Blue Friday. Fox. Happy Blue Friday. Right. Okay. Hey, Perfect, guys. Um, Thank you. For for our for those who stayed around and are watching our Zoom link, can I just offer a prayer for us before we go? Yes, please. That would be great. Gracious God, I want to say thank you for this opportunity to uh, enjoy uh, the blessing of sports. Um, thank you, God, for for the opportunity for us to to gather together um, from different backgrounds and different ethnicities and different. Um, all, all the different walks of life that you have given to us as a round table. Uh, and Lord, we just pray for our nation today as we commemorate, as we remember September 11th. Um, God, we, we ask that you might bring unity uh, to our nation, that you might bring healing, that you might bring reconciliation. I thank you, God, that these are the things that you are about and Lord, help us to uh, do our part. Help us to see uh, where it is that, that we need to, uh, to have our hearts searched and, um, and to make, make changes happen. And so, Lord, we ask, uh, too, for your blessing on Michelle. Thank you, God, that uh, she does church here every afternoon uh, just by bringing glory and honor to you. So we pray your blessing upon her. And I pray for the radio listening audience, too. I thank you for KGNW, the word, and the way that uh, people out there are, are absorbing and, and hearing and engaging uh, with you and your people and with your kingdom. And so, God, uh, I pray that we would be people, all of us, um, who are people who, who follow and live out uh, the example of Jesus. And in his name that we pray. Amen. 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 Good prayer. Yeah. I, you, and guys. there are ways that all of this crazy stuff has changed me. 
Um, I think of how annoyed I was with a lot going on in sports until Chris said, hey, remember, and this was back when a lot of this first happened, and you said, yeah, you got to remember where these guys come from. You know, this is their first time they've had a platform. Mm -hmm. I was like, boom, you know what? Here I was going, hey, you're kneeling during my anthem. I'm up there crying, singing, everyone's making fun of me, like, who's that crazy girl? I'm like, you're kneeling there. But having that understanding, that's what the gospel is about, man. I had to, I had to, to tweak my, my attitude and not, not come out, you know, with guns blazing and words and coming down on people, but trying to understand where people come from to hear. I mean, yeah, there needs to be some change in all of us. So there we Thanks, go. Thanks everyone. All Good of to us, be with all you all today. Except for Rich. All of us except Rich Hobbs. He's, he's Rich is sorry. Chris is uh, Chris, Chris is well, talking, but we're Chris not hearing him. Muted. Oh, yeah, because he's <laughs> muted. That's right. He muted. That's all right. Oh, I, I think it's saying all of us. All of us need to change except for Rich Hallstrom. He's Rich no, is good man. to go. No man. No <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> You haven't, you haven't lived with me long enough then, man. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, All right, guys. God bless you. Have a great weekend. All right. God bless. All great right. job, y'all. Thank you so much, Bye. Michelle. Hey, Garrett. Hey, Garrett. Can you hear me? Yes. Garrett. Hey, can you send yes. that, like, the video?